This looks like science. Yeah, it is science. See? We have a, uh, a that shirt, shirt here, is right? the bomb. I know, it's fun to wear. You want to check this out here? Yes. Yeah, I got a YouTube channel on the bottom that's got some okay. information about, you know, why somebody would think the earth is flat. Yeah. Water lays level and flat. Yeah. And so, how would water conform to the exterior of a shape, yeah. you know, that's moving and spinning? Because centrifugal force would show on a merry-go-round. If I were to pull you around it, you would have to hang on for dear life, right? Yeah. But then they tell us, well, gravity keeps things together. Wow. So that's mind control, you know, that's like, you know, like some kind of a brainwashing that's happening. But water isn't a mass or a land, it's a liquid. You know, so how is it that water can conform to the exterior of a shape? Because I've never seen the Earth from this perspective before in outer space. And if I choose not to believe that this is where I live, I don't see anything wrong with it, but typically people would say, well, you're not, you deny science. But isn't science something that we should be able to demonstrate and objectively show in nature, and then you should be able to duplicate it? Come in. Yes. 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 Well, you pronounced it right. <laughs> what, what I heard was that they say that God laid out the earth like a cup, suggesting that it's flat. No. It doesn't say that in the Quran? No. And if it does, you have to remember there are different translations of the Quran. And you have some people, just like they did with the Bible, translate it how they want to and take out how they, what the true meaning is. For a person to really understand what the Bible is saying, what the Quran is saying, they have to actually learn the language. They have to study the language. And, yeah, you no, know, just like with the Bible. A person has to study Hebrew. We can't rely on translations because anybody can translate anything to whatever they, they want to. And what Allah says in the Quran is that He created the art. The art meaning the earth, not saying the shape of it. There's no shape in the Quran of, of how the earth is. We just know it's earth. And we leave it at that and trust in faith that God made the land. We need to know, know, know all the different, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't, you probably see a translation like that. Most likely they're a translation for somebody that wants to translate some things to agree with their understanding of the slam. Kind of like these terrorists. Do. They just they just they just take a verse out of the Quran or something that Muhammad said and translate it the way they want to to support terrorism, which is totally wrong. So it's bad that it's like that, but every religion has their people who will translate a book that's authentic to their own understanding and, and you know how they want to. Well, I, I, I don't claim to know much about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you know, in the Bible, we do talk, in the Bible, they talk about the food. Yeah. yeah. I know you talk about in the Quran is spoken about as hell that's under the earth, heaven that's above. That, we, that's the same in the Bible and in, in the Quran. But as far as the shape and the form of the earth, I don't see that. I'm sorry. All right, y'all have a good day. Nice talking to y'all. Yeah, let me um, let me show you this. Twenty. 2053. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means to you, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe you know better the context of it, you know, than I do. No, but. I mean, I don't know who the translator of that particular of, of it is, mm -hmm. or what this actually means. Yeah. So he who has laid out the earth as a carpet for you. Because if you were to lay out like a carpet, you wouldn't have any humps in it, right? Mm -hmm. That would just be unnatural. Just be natural, yeah. 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 So what? Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest idea with flat Earth would be that water lays level and flat. Because we see ice, you know, when the snow melts, <laughs> when the snow melts, you know, it's going down a hill at times, and then it will seek its level and level out at the top. So that's just something to, you know, good to look into. Look into, yeah. yeah thank you. Take care of yourself. You too. Y'all take care. Nice to meet you. Yep. Nice to meet you too. Come on, come on. It's good to have 
It's good to have tables like this sitting down, not debating about politics all the time. Yeah, I know that much. Yeah, take care. The music helps. The music helps. How you doing? You part of like the Flat Earth Society? What is that? I don't know. I'm just wondering. Well, Are you, you part of the group that you moves? mentioned it? Okay. Uh, some I read on Joe Rogan's podcast. So I've been on Eddie Bravo. Okay. Is it's Joe cool. Rogan a credible source? I say so. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah, he huh? does his research. He does, huh? Did you know that Joe Rogan flip-flopped on the moon landing? No, I did not. But I know we're human, so we make mistakes. We can't be perfect. Well, he said a, a while back that the moon landing didn't happen. There's a bunch of evidence to show that it didn't. And then he says now that it did happen. Well, that's, some, that's good insight. Yeah. So, did you know that on camera he said he would lie to his mom? If they told him that aliens existed and like showed him all the backstage stuff that's going on in the deep state, I guess I really wasn't talking about Joe Rogan. I was talking about the podcast, but more well, Ed Bravo well, was the guy who brought up. I thought we were talking about Joe Rogan though. Like, oh, no, is Joe just... Rogan separate from his podcast? Um, no, you asked about how I brought up the society. I was like Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, Eddie Bravo was a major proponent. He was the guy on there speaking about it. That's sure. So about. Eddie Bravo specifically said he's Flat all Earth about is... it. Yeah, he's he's no he's with it. He's with it. Okay. He so. never in in my opinion, like from what I've heard um of Eddie Bravo, he's always denounced Flat Earth Society saying that that's a government run agency to make fun of and discredit the Flat Earth in 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 and of itself. That's weird then I must uh must be getting something mixed up. I thought Eddie Bravo was all about it so that's but, why, that's why but the Flat Earth Society is a run, government-run NASA, most likely, agency saying that the Earth is a disk floating upwards to create gravity at 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. So I'm just trying to educate you. No, I don't. You know? yep. So I'm asking you, like, where you got your stuff, because if you were to investigate it, like, if you don't, if you just take everything by what you see, just like on my sign here, it says, would Google ever lie to you? Right. So if you go to your source of wherever you feel is credible source, and you just eat it up, and then you never like investigate an alternative viewpoint, no offense, you're no better than anybody else that walks on this path, because you're all blue pillars. You know, you just take up whatever the government says. Hey, government narrative says this, so man, it must be true. But if you were to investigate like Joe Rogan and stuff, he's a liar. Okay. You know, on camera he said he would lie to his mom. You know? So he's a liar. He's a piece of garbage. And everybody in the flat earth community would say that to his like two foot tall face. Wow. Yeah, he's a piece of trash. Dude. That's something that, you know, I guess you really don't pay attention to. I guess it's more of like entertainment for me. Well yeah, I mean I get that. But if you're in if you're in love with a girl and you're and you're dating her and everything, and you have friends come up to you and say, Hey man, like I saw your girlfriend like hanging out with this other guy and like I didn't see him kiss per se, but like they were acting really chummy and something you just might want to look into. But if you're so in love with that girl that it just goes over your head, you're never going to look into it. You know, so maybe I'm the guy that's saying, hey, you know what, Joe Rogan's kind of like a piece of trash and he's not necessarily anything that would sh you should take as credible source because he denies flat earth. He denies right. all this stuff. He has Neil deGrasse Tyson come on and make fun of this topic, whereas a number of years ago, he was all on board with the fake moon landing, which is true. The moon landing is a 100% hoax on the American population and the world. So how does somebody flip-flop? Well, if you offer somebody enough money, right? sure, they'll flip-flop for sure, man. Offer them enough women, offer them some property maybe on some island that nobody knows about, and then you have them tout out your rhetoric, whatever it is that you want to have them talk about, as long as you don't talk about this topic, you're cool with us, type of deal. So, huh. have you ever looked into, like, Flat Earth as, like, well, a that's serious... That's I was curious, like, it's when I first heard Eddie Rowell talking about it, which was, like, I think, I forget what, I gotta, I gotta go back and try and find that, I could have sworn that he was for it. Oh, he I, is for I, it. I, I thought, Eddie Bravo was, is for it. I thought it was... But he wouldn't say the Flat Earth Society is a credible source. Oh, okay. 
Gotcha. That's what I'm saying. Yep. Nope. That makes sense. That makes you sense. You know, so like he would say the same thing I'm saying. You know, like the Flatter Society is a government-run website to discredit the movement to make it like look like it's a joke. Okay. And that that's what sense. government does. Government is controlled opposition. They're the ones that create the narrative. They're the ones that create the conspiracy theories. Right. You know, they have five different conspiracy theories about 9/11. And it's like, whichever one person wants to grasp onto, that's up to them. But we're the ones that are in control of the narrative. Okay. You know, so that's just, you know, something to be aware of. I got a brochure here. It's kind of got a, you know, quick 10 heads up on, you know, what... So is only the Earth flat? Or are, is, are all the other stars and planets and everything else around us flat as well? So outer space? Yeah. Have you ever been to outer space? No, but I've been... Have you ever been to outer space? No. Come on. Okay. okay. So I know about airplanes and stuff. This isn't my first rodeo and everything, but outer space has nothing to do with where we live, right? So what if we focused on here where we live on land and we have water, right? If I would, if, if we were to measure from point A to point B over a body of water, it lays level and flat and we would be able to hit our target because water doesn't bend. That makes sense? Like. You've never, I, I would assume you've never seen the, gl the globe from that perspective before, right? Let's say you're in outer space, for example, you know, and you're like, you know, 10 million miles away from the, the earth. Have you seen the earth from that perspective before? Can't say ever. Then I haven't either, right? But for me to take government narrative that that's where we live, that's like religion. That's like a faith because you're saying, okay, government's my God and they're the ones that are the ones that can interpret the sky for me. And everything they said, because it's on Hollywood movies, for right. example, because that's basically where you're probably getting most of your ideas about outer space, is through entertainment and movies. And then NASA comes in and says, well, here, here are everything outside of the Earth, but it's all CGI and computers. What about the SpaceX uh, car launch? Is that The Tesla? Yeah. Is that computer generated then too? I mean... No offense, do you believe that a car, they launched a car? If they can put satellites... A car? Why not? Do you know what would happen if a car was launched in outer space? What? Have you looked into it? No, I'm just curious. No. Okay. But you just like, you're like, oh, he launched a car in outer space and he never looked into like the possibilities of like the tires. Because Elon Musk in a press conference says that we didn't do anything to the car. It's a stock car right off the lot and we just put it in outer space. Okay. So it, it, if you look at the science, the real science of it, if you look at the real science of it, it's absolutely impossible for a car to be launched in outer space. Like tires would explode or something? Tires would explode, the paint would melt off. I mean, even in 105 degree temperatures in Arizona, siding melts off of cars. And that's not even counting the 500 plus Fahrenheit degree temperature in, outer, in a vacuum. You know, and that's a vacuum for crying out loud, you know? Hmm. So, I mean, that's that's a complete fraud, and if you actually watch the, the live stream, the feed, it actually glitched out and it showed that the car was inside of a uh, particular contraption where it was like being held by a crane, and all around it was the luminaries to make it appear like it's in outer space. It glitched out for like five seconds. And that's that video is available, I mean, you can watch it, right. you know, it's out there. Okay. So, I guess that really doesn't have anything to... Oh yeah, it does because if it's fake and they're showing the Earth while it's up there... Yeah, they're just yeah. faking everything, man. They're okay. faking where I live, where we live. We're human beings. And we can't so, even, we don't even, it's like we don't even have a right to know where we live, for real. And they're lying to us about that, so they're hiding something. So we're actually like in a cage almost? Well, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're here on this pond, you know, and take it for the continents where they're located. They could be anywhere. I didn't make this map, you didn't make it, right. so if we're just going to take it at face value, you know, there's all this water right here, like what's here? Is there an island right here? Is there another continent right here? I mean, I don't know. Right. So if I just, if, if I'm a person and I just go airport to airport, I can't tell the pilot, hey, let's go down here and find out what's going on. Of course you can't do that, right? You know, so we have to just go from airport to airport and we, ha you know, most people we just have to take, you know, government for what they say. But I'm just here to just kind of say, hey, you know, let's just try to investigate. 
okay. a little bit, and let's see if we can get enough people together to do some more exploration in the future. So there's no like science experiments done where they send balloons miles up into space and then they explode and they got the footage, recovered footage that's all fake too? High altitude balloons, yeah. 25 miles up, it's still a level horizon. It's still level? Okay. Yeah. The mathematic, the mathematic that's involved with your heliocentric model ball Earth, if you look at the math, you can't even, you, can, you won't ever see curvature until you get far enough away to where you see it as a circle. You know, and that's almost two to three thousand miles up. So two, 25 miles, even the ISS claims to be at 250 miles, that's still not high enough to see curvature. So, and, and, and it's funny because all you're seeing like, and when you see curvature, it's always like from left to right, it's never like in front of you. You know, so it's like, it's kind of, uh, they, they trick your mind at a very young age, and then you just buy into it because it's authority. Right. Santa Claus is real, right? When you're 10 years old. Right, that no, makes sense. You know, so you're getting primed to be lied to as you get older. And if you question authority, you have that like sinking feeling, you know, in your heart. Like when the cop comes up behind you, even though you're going to speed limit, your seatbelt's on and everything, you all, you all of a sudden start to act like you're proper. Right. You know, so they already got you there. So now, you know, when you question where we live, which is, I think, in my opinion, is the most important question of all, you know, there's going to be that feeling of, like, doubt of, oh, okay, what else could they be lying to me about? Okay. Um, so, I guess, how do you prove the Earth is flat? Yeah, Science. so, over a body of water, there have been laser tests 20 to 30 miles over a body of water from point A to point B. And there's a uh, curvature calculation because we're just using their their math to you know find out what the circumference is and the radius and everything and then you have it right there so it's an excel program and you just look at 25 miles and what the curvature drop should be so that means that over a distance that object that you're trying to look at should be below the horizon like below the curvature right right but we still see things too far and the idea of things traveling further away from you from the bot and disappearing from the bottom up, that's just simple water temperature, air temperature being different. So the sun is beating down on the, on the water to heat it up, which will create a natural mirroring effect because it's eva the water's evaporating. But if you come out earlier in the day and you do that same observation, you'll still see the boat with your own physical eyes. But as it travels further away from your perspective, which is the curve convergence point, you'll be able to zoom that in with like a high-powered zoom lens, like a camera or something. I think the thing that's closest that relates to it that is kicking in my head is somebody said something about a plane or whatever. You took it up <laughs> here and we're at twenty-five thousand feet. All of a sudden, you'd be yeah way above. You'd be way up. You know. Yeah. You'd be at 50, 60, 70,000 feet for however many miles you fly. <clears throat> yeah, air, um, pilots don't adjust for curvature. I mean, pilots don't even fly, really. It's all autopilot. But when they land, before they take off, they zero out their gyroscope, and then they fly, and then that gyroscope is always leveled with the horizon. There's never any dipping, which should happen every 60 to 100 miles. You should dip the nose down to make sure that you don't fly off into outer space. But that just isn't how it works. So it's just kind of like a reintroduction to, you know, where so what, we live. What, what, and is this, what does it change then, like for you, like personally? Like, let's just say you truly believe it is flat Earth. What does it change for you? Are you married? Not married. You have a girlfriend or anything? Nope. No? I mean, I could ask the same thing that, to that person. Oh, you're married? Yeah. Okay, what has that done for you? I mean, I'm not married, so how does that change my life? I'm not married. Right. Well, but if I get married then I'll know how it changes my life. So for me to be where I'm at, and you ask me that question, you're not gonna be able to experience that until you actually like look at the evidence, and then in your heart, you decide to choose to know that the earth is flat, and then you just go from there. You know, I'm just here, I'm just, just some guy, you know? Like, I'm just here doing my role here, when whatever I die, I die, but I'm just here to inform the public. So obviously what it's done for me is I'm here. I'm not running around the lake, I'm not at the right. baseball game, I'm not going to Valley Fair and just worrying about me, myself, and I. I care about people, that's why I'm here. So I would hope that that would at least show that it's changed me. 
you know, and then when you realize that we're all part of the same little collective consciousness, it changes how you think about people and look at people. You don't judge them because of their ignorance or just lack of knowledge. You just say, hey, you know, I got this information, check it out. You know, if it's something that you want to do, you know, that's up to you. But for me, it's just changed my outlook on humanity and kind of has allowed me to have a little bit more compassion and, you know, thinking about others there rather than myself. I think it clearly makes you question what the government tells you, too. For yeah. me, I wouldn't question them at all. Oh, yeah. But for, for sure. you, I think, because you've done your research. And but doesn't, but, but could you admit that there's a couple of things that the government has lied about? I'm sure they have, yeah. Like Gulf of Tonkin, for example? Yeah. It's the, it's a false flag that was used to get us into the Vietnam War. They admit that that happened, you know? So, if, if they can do stuff like that, if they can admit, if, if Bill Clinton in, I think it was sometime in the 90s, can go on camera and apologize for um, people being injected with plutonium without their knowledge, and the government did it, I mean, that's, isn't that something? Bill Clinton went on and apologized for people being injected with plutonium without their knowledge. People be injected with syphilis and all these other different diseases so that they can find out, the government from behind the scenes can find out what this little town, what this happens in this little town. You know, these things are admitted and you can, like, these are declassified, you know, and take them for what they're worth, right? But the government has admitted, just because it's been decades, right? It's, it's not like they're going to admit something right away, like Flat Earth. I just don't understand why they would need to lie about it, though. But they, but they are, though. That's the thing. Right, I know. You I know? just know what, what, what goal does it get them? Yeah. How does it benefit them? Well, it controls your mind. There's a lot more. I mean, on this ball earth right here, it, could we agree that there's only so much water and land that's available? Yeah. Okay. So are they obligated to show you what the land is right here? Even if we're taking the globe for what it's worth, right? There's a lot of water here. Yeah. What if there's a continent here that they're just not disclosing? Wow. You know, what if there... But then if you go to, like, the flat earth side, what if there's just more land and water that goes on infinitely forever? And us humans as being co-creators in this reality, and we have faith, and we just say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to take a boat, and I'm just going to go south this way for two months... I know there's more land out there. I will find it. But they use treaties like the Antarctic Treaty in the mid-50s to scare people away from traveling out because people are afraid to go travel because of this treaty because allegedly you'll be shot or, you know, taken over or you're just not allowed to do that because, you know, it's a treaty. <laughs> so you can go down to Antarctica, but you're kind of velvet roped into a certain area where... You're not allowed to really just go off and just say, Hey guys, I'm just going to go down that way. I'm going to take the tracker. I'm just going to travel down this way a couple of weeks. You know, you can't do that. you got to stay with your tour group. What the, What's the name of that movie that's basically this? Oh, man. Yeah, there's a, a, like Truman Show, Truman stuff like Show, that. Yeah, yeah. That one. I mean, that's yeah. pretty much it right there, huh? Yeah, I mean, they, hide, they put a lot of their stuff in movies. You know, it's kind of like truth in plain sight type of deal. This place has a karmetic essence to it where it has to tell it on itself. You know, it's kind of like the story about Job. You know, like God and God and Satan are having this conversation about Job. You know, and Satan's like, just look, come on, just let me do something to Job. Come on. And God's like, okay, you can do whatever you want, but just don't kill him. You know, so this place is a test to know where your allegiance is. And a lot of people's allegiance is towards government because they don't want to have a they don't want to have responsibility they don't want to be held accountable to anything like if you can just go around and just think well somebody else did that be like, we got scientists for crying out loud they do that stuff i go to the baseball games i go to work 40 hours a week and pay my taxes and that's what they want you to do so it obfuscates your own personal responsibility about what's going on and who we are as human beings and I think that's kind of what Flat Earth is starting to do, is it's starting to hold people accountable. And just saying, hey, you know what, you're taking a lot of information 
from second and third parties, and that's really no different than just reading the Bible and saying, yep, I believe it because it's in the Bible. Right. I mean, it's challenging. I mean, I've been doing this for over three years, you know, so it takes a while to kind of like ingest. But really, like, the only thing I encourage people to do is just look at the physics of water, <laughs> start over, and take that idea of gravity out of your head. Just look at how fluid works, how gas works. You know, like, if you put water and oil together overnight, let it sit, they're going to separate themselves. But they're going to separate themselves equally horizontally you know it's not, there's never going to be a curvature or anything like that you're going to have like this little meniscus because of water tension and stuff on the cup you know but that's nothing that's nothing because the more the the wider the cup you're just going to have that little meniscus but it's still going to be level and flat in the middle so at no point will it ever like show an obvious curvature of any kind so just check out how water works you know just really grasp that concept Have you ever gone overseas or anything? Gone to the beach, like in Florida or something like that, yeah, California? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Florida. Have you seen a sunset? Not that I remember. Like okay. In Florida or anything like that. Yeah, I've seen sunsets, yeah. Seen sunsets over a body of water? No. Okay. Some people have um, taken pictures just on their vacation and they don't think anything of it. But what happens when the sun is traveling, what it's doing is the sun's moving. The sun's traveling further away from your perspective. You know, so sooner or later it's going to be over California, right? But the sun's going to be over there. So it's just further away from you. But as the sun starts to get eaten up by the horizon, that sun ray comes all the way up to your feet. But that couldn't happen on a ball earth because it would only come up about halfway because the water would be curved. So the sun, as it's further away from you, that sun ray would only come up halfway because it's curved, right? Because yeah. it's hitting the curvature of the earth. But because water lays level and flat, it comes all the way up to your feet. And again, because we're all human co-creators in this reality, I have my own sun ray, you have yours, and everybody else has theirs, and I can't come in front of you and like steal your sunshine. So these are just like natural observations that we can see to know that the Earth is a level plane. It's, it's through our educational process that they trick us into something that's not real. And you can choose to believe that, right? All they're doing is just providing you stories and information. But if you choose to believe that, that's on you and that's your responsibility because then you're believing a lie. That's like Santa Claus, right? Right, yeah. I mean, if you really want to believe that some fat guy can go down a chimney as a child, sure, you're naive and your parents are telling you that, but as a critical thinker and an adult, you know that that's completely impossible to do all that in one night, you know? So, I think a group of seriously dedicated people <laughs> mm -hmm. should raise enough money to get a boat and just start going. Yeah, I think so too. And, you know, video at all. Yeah. You can take as much footage as you possibly can. Live stream it if you can, you know, do all that stuff. But, you know, this topic is only four or five years old, you know, and, and now it's just starting to gain traction, you know, with people, but... Again, people are so busy. Right. I'm not. <laughs> like I don't I, I don't have a lot going on in my life. So I have the free time to do this and I would be all about a hundred million dollar Jeff Bezos yacht and travel with a couple hundred people. You know, but other people are busy. They got jobs, they got their own family. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So that's kind of the catch twenty two now. You know, how do we get the free time? Yeah to do these things. So all we can do is just show evidence, you know, like with high altitude balloon footage, laser experiments over a body of water, infrared on a on an air thousand feet showing 800 miles right in front of you. At 35,000 feet with an infrared camera, you're able to see almost a thousand miles. There should be there should be a clear curvature drop. Like it clearly should show like with the math that they're telling us, with the circumference of the Earth and the radius of the of what they tell us, right? Yeah. You know, so either a, they're the Earth is bigger than what they told us, or it's a level, non-rotating plane. You know. Is there any historical evidence 
that people 100, 200 years ago believed the world was flat or still round? Or 100 years ago, they thought the earth was flat. Really? So yeah. then something happened where people yeah. proved that, oh, no, 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 it's round, it's round. Yeah, it was, it was a whole psychological warfare type of thing to try to instill some kind of new consciousness shift. Um, possibly, you know, that would motivate people to think about aliens from outer space. You know, because if we can't get to the luminaries that we see in the sky, then we have to create some kind of an imagination. And we come out with comic books back in the 20s, like Buck Rogers and all this other stuff talking about outer space. Even though we've never been up there, it's just the imagination, something like Einstein or um, uh, Mark Twain said, that the imagination is more powerful than facts. You know, so if we can get people to start thinking like in 1927, before all of our movies, we have a ball earth spinning before all of our movies, even though we've never been high enough to see the earth do this. You know, we're that just, is quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, so we're just going to start to, you know, predictively program the human consciousness to think that that's where we live. That is so, that is a good one right there. And then in the late 50s, finally, we get the rocket technology to go high enough. To, and then we find out that there's a firmament above us, like it talks about in Genesis 1. You know, how he separated the waters from below and the waters from above. And now we have this, like, little pocket that we can breathe and have life and stuff. And that's where we live. But there's waters above us, so there's a ceiling, which may be 70 to 100 miles above us. So look into the idea of uh, Operation Fishbowl, where allegedly... Some of the more powerful countries on Earth shot nuclear weapons or rockets or some kind of explosive devices that could be shot up. Um, but also the other idea of Project uh, Operation Fishbowl is to electrify the atmosphere and to make it more uh, maybe make it more able to transmit radio waves ac across the air because then you're electrifying it, you know, and turning it in. You're changing the atmosphere. So there's two different stories there. It could be like, oh, they're shooting nukes to see the to check out the ceiling, but what if they already knew there was a ceiling and they're just using it to make sure that they could transmit television and radio signals thousands of miles away? Because all of our communication done on Earth is through ground towers and fiber optics, and then we have hot air balloon, high altitude balloons, which we call satellites. Okay. And that's how Google Earth works. I mean, you type in Google Earth balloons, yeah. that's how Google Earth was made. Wow. It's through high altitude balloons, not satellites. Really? Yeah. Type in high altitude balloons. I mean, it's just really fascinating. Some people have allegedly seen crashed high altitude balloons <coughs> that look, you know, exactly like all this stuff. Really? Yeah. So. You know, check, you know, <clears throat> you can type that in. Just type in, like, crashed satellite or crashed satellite, high altitude balloon or something like that. You know, you'll come up with it. Do you have a computer at home? Yeah. I have, um... Here you go. I have some information on that, if you don't mind. I don't have a CD drive. Oh, you don't? okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. You had a USB stick. In I know. Story, right? USB are they're so expensive. You can get twenty of them for like fifty bucks, fifty-five bucks on Amazon. And they're like four. What about Micro Center. Yeah, sure. They're still no DVDs. Blank DVDs are a hundred for twenty bucks. Oh yeah. And what you get what four. What you need then is to like post your stuff on some server or some website oh, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I got them on my playlist on oh, my YouTube something, channel. Something on here? Okay. Yeah, on Authentic Intent. I will yeah. check it. Okay. Cool, right, man. So, Is there anything in the Bible that relates to Flat Earth? Yeah, it's actually, I got a file, um, well, I got it on here, but if you, um, let me see. Do you have your phone on you? Yeah. Yeah. Type in this guy's name here. The Flat Earth Bible. Yeah. Flat Earth Bible. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. And this is a document that I have on the disc. From Unicamp, got it. Got yeah. It. Okay. I will and, bookmark this. Yeah, bookmark it. And you know, First Chronicles 1630, he has fixed the earth firm and immovable. Psalms 93, 1, thou hast fixed the earth immovable and firm. Um, so it's just stuff, you know, I mean, Genesis 1 talks about a firmament above us. So that would be a, a ceiling, like a, a glass dome. So it would almost look like, you know, you've seen a snow globe, right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot, some of the flat earthers would prescribe to a dome firmament, but I've never seen the edge of the dome. So it would be like this right here is the dome. So it's just like a canopy over it. Yeah. And that's where the Antarctic Treaty comes in. But I haven't climbed up the Antarctic ice wall and gone and knocked on the dome. That's just, I haven't done that. So I prescribe to the earth being infinite infinite and level that just has more land and shorelines. Because water has to be contained, otherwise it will always flow, right? Right. So if there's just more shorelines that we're unaware of, and then the water just continues to go on because of the deluge, right? In Noah, and the flood, okay, yeah. in Genesis 6. So there's obviously significantly more land then, in my opinion, I guess. But if there is a dome, then if we climb up this ice wall and we knock on the dome, then there has to be some kind of containment then. But a lot of people think that the ice wall holds the water in, but there's a guy named Admiral Byrd in the 1950s who ventured through the ice wall and said that there's more land and resources more so than what we have now. And the, but that's coming from military, you know, so I'm like, uh, sounds like a cool story, but I've never done it before, man. And then shortly after that, they came up with NASA and the Antarctic Treaty. So when you come up with these treaties and you call things like, you know, um, reservations and stuff like that, it's basically government's way of saying, all of you civilians can't go here. Only government can. And that's not fair, because shouldn't we all have access to land right, yeah. as human beings? I mean, in my opinion, free water, free air, and free land should be available to everyone. Uh, I've never seen lava before. They got a volcano? Yeah. Never seen it? Yeah. People claim there is, you know? There's a lot of, you know, ideas out there that, that, that doesn't exist. I've, I've never seen it before. I don't prescribe to that. It's not anything that I get lost in, you know? But if the earth is level and flat like this table, let's just use the table as a means, human beings have only drilled into the ground eight miles. So even if we were to use government like uh, narrative and say the Earth from the surface to the core is 4,000 miles in radius, how do you know that if you've only drilled eight miles into it? Right. And then if you do take government narrative, then you have to believe them that they've gone that somehow they've mapped out these different layers, you know. So if the Earth goes on, you know, horizontally. You know, even just for another 25,000 miles, <coughs> we've, <coughs> we've only drilled in eight miles, you know? And things just fall because they're just way more than the air around them. You know, it has nothing to do with gravity, it's just because there could be a pressure, because we live in a pressurized system. So it could just be a pressure of the, of the area that we live in, because if you go high enough, like, if you look at the horizon right now, it's kind of, it's not even blue anymore. It's kind of like a, a light blue. And then if you look straight up, it's more blue, right? But if we were to go up 2,000 feet, you know, even like a mile and a half or something like that, we'll see more land for sure, but that haze would go away because we're above whatever, you know, molecules, atmosphere, oxygen, water, you know, water perspiration. So we're in it right now, so we can't, you know, see far enough to see anything. So we got to use high optics and lenses and stuff. Well, it's always interesting. I mean, for me, it's interesting to me. But yeah, I appreciate you listening. I mean, you know, yeah, it's just one of those things that, like, I totally don't. I always take everything into consideration. Think, you know, kind of like what if, or whatever, you know. And, yeah. But it's all about doing your research. And yeah, I mean, you know, it's always good to just 
whether you agree with somebody or not, it's always good to just at least hear their side and hear where they're coming from and how they possibly got to that point. But I think a lot of people are afraid to take in somebody else's perspective because they're afraid that they might agree with them at some point. Right. And there, come, there comes a cost with that. Ridicule, mockery, maybe separation from friends and family. But in my opinion, truth is more important than just believing in tradition and going along with your family. So. Well, I appreciate you being on That's great. I mean, yeah, I appreciate you stopping and being curious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely curious whenever I see somebody, you know, trying to portray a side or yeah. show evidence and that kind of stuff. But I will. I'll do some research on the water, though. Cause, I mean, that's it's all about science, really, more than anything. It is. I mean, and that's... You, that's... Just, you can just Google and do research and make up your own mind. Like, oh, it isn't flat, but that's what you're reading somebody else's perspective or why or whatever. But we're doing hard, concrete evidence in science. Science is tough to, like, you can't really... You know, 2 plus 2, is that always equal to 4? Yeah. 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 Fair enough, man. Appreciate Take you. care.